We are live. We are live. We are live. 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 Hello, lovely Gareth. Hello. <laughs> How are you? And hello, lovely YouTuber. Whether you're watching us live, I don't know yet. No one has joined us yet, but they might do. Um, and um, and welcome to any YouTuber who's watching us later on. Lovely to have you in this afternoon. Um, this is our tea time tutorial where we have lots of fun. We do lots of different crafty things. Today we're going to be doing some sewing and we, yes, we have our tea. I have an M. This is not for me. <laughs> I thought I say that, shouldn't I? It's actually a member of our family whose name begins with an M. But I stole it because it's very big and it had. You can see I've been enjoying it. It's got hot chocolate today. Mm. What have you got? Builder's tea. Earl Grey? Oh, Builder. sorry. Builder's tea, no, not Earl Grey. Very occasionally I might have some Earl Grey, but just proper, bre what they call probably breakfast tea or just ordinary Indian tea, nice and strong, nice big mug, perfect. Perfect. Well, we've got our tea, we've got our bits mm -hmm. and pieces. Today, I'm just gonna change this lighting because it's a little less better. It was a bit white, a bit white. Um, today, well, I'm quite terrified because Gary has set me the challenge today of making a block my first quilting block using these strips. Um, so we're gonna be doing that, but if you are a beginner quilter, and this is a good block to start with, Gary has insisted. So this mm -hmm. is gonna be a good tutorial for you to watch. But first of all, we always do a bit of mindfulness. If you are watching on the repeat, there will be a time code underneath, so you can skip all this stuff and you can go straight to our tutorial where we are talking, what, what's the actual name of it? A string block, a string on a foundation block. Right, so. We're using strings, which are strips. So yep. we're using lots of strips and we're building, we're going to make a block on a foundation. So we're going to have a foundation to actually build these strings up upon. So yes, it's sort of like it's a strips and a foundation block. That's what we're going to do. It's a great way of using up scraps. Lovely. Well, we're going to do that. And, and Gary did some in my care package this week. So I've got all my bits and pieces here. Um, and I'm looking forward to it, but also slightly terrified. But first of all, we'll do our bit of my... <laughs> Now it's only for a couple of minutes so do stick with us and we just try and give you some words of wisdom every week on a different little subject and by the way we do go live on a Friday if we don't go live we always at least put content out on a Friday so always check out our tea time tutorials on Friday and please you know I'm going to say please like please hit the subscribe button um, and if you'd like to buy us a coffee there is a little buy us a coffee we've actually lowered I realized that our buy us a coffee was a five pound button which is extremely ridiculous so I think it's down to two pounds now Gary two pounds is it fantastic if anybody would like to donate to the channel for two pounds that would be great um, so you can hit the buy a coffee button you can hit the button you can hit the subscribe button and the like button is very important because then it gets us out into the youtube world apparently so the mindfulness bit now normally i give gary a quote but today gary said i have one today i'd like to give that quote to you so i'm ready what is your mindfulness <laughs> today gary okay so i heard i don't know where i heard this it was something other, yesterday and i heard it and i've written it down in my book um i've got my little my little jotter book here and i wrote it down and it says, what would you leave? So this is what I want you to think about. And maybe it's sort of like a thing to think about. What would you leave to the world to be discovered by an archeologist 300 years into the future? There you go. What would you leave? So, you know, we're here only one time. Well, I think we're here this time. We might come back again other times, but we're here this time. So if you were going to create something that you wanted to leave to the world, or you do now that you think, gosh, if an archaeologist archeologi <laughs> found this 300 years, what would they make of it? And how would it inform them 300 years into the future? Oh, you've really put me, I say things like, oh, how do we forgive someone? And I do a bit of body stuff. This is really <laughs> difficult. You really put me on the spot. I mean, my first thought was I'd leave them my iPhone. Because <laughs> they go, whoa, this was really old fashioned technology. What were they doing 300 years ago? Uh, but I don't yeah. think they were working. So, um, my, well, do you know something? I mean, one of the things I think of is that I would just leave them a piece of like maybe even my first block that I've created today, but leave them <laughs> something that is a textile based thing because. I think then they will be able to see that from the first, they would have history that the first textiles were maybe the 1800s or whatever, whenever, well, seven, I don't know, 1600s, yeah. whenever the first tapestry was created. And yet here we are in 2023, still using textiles. And so one yeah. thing that is 
constant in our lives is creativity, crafting, textiles, creations, learning. So I think I would leave something like that. I think I would leave a block. That's a really good thing to say, actually, because um, I don't know if you've heard of the Foundling Museum in London, yeah. which was back in the 19, well, probably the end of the 18th century into the 19th century, where foundlings was with unwanted children were left on the steps um, of this hospital. And it was for, you know, because the people were so poor, they couldn't look after extra children. But just in case that that mother could afford to have that baby back, they always would pin something to the child, to the baby, to identify them. And um, quite often, because they couldn't read or write and they couldn't often, you know, leave a note, what they did was they would take a little snippet of one of their garments. So it might have been an undergarment or an overgarment. They just cut a little square and they would pin it to the baby. Now, in the Foundling Museum, there is a whole raft or a vast amount of all these little little snippets of fabric and not only obviously there's the story behind it is it's rather sad and that because they still have those bits of fabrics that those children didn't go back to their mother but what it tells us also is a great wealth of social history of what the fabrics people were wearing and you know where you know the prints on them the how it was woven what materials they were made from so and some of these some of these pieces of fabric aren't just a snippet. They have been embroidered into. They may have had like little crosses, stars put on them or something. So they are there, captured in time for us to now see that sort of like, you know, nearly 200 years, 100, 200 years into the future to see that. So when you say about textiles, I think textiles is a great way of telling people into the future what we're doing at the moment. We might be using scraps of fabric that we're wearing and cutting them up and making them into things we might be the way that we're actually putting them together so now in this time we use hand sewing but also we have sewing machines and that automatically sew them what will we have in the future to put fabrics together are they welded together are they sort of like invisibly with a laser like stick with a laser will they have still natural fabrics like cottons and silks and wools, will that still be available or will we have moved on to more sort of man-made fibres but are much more sort of um, eco-friendly? So they see the dyes and the prints in the fabric that we use nowadays and they might like stand back in horror and thinking, oh, this was so sad for the planet, what we're doing, you know, what they were doing at the time. So all those things I think are a really good thing to think about when we're in our practice of sewing and art and design, you know, all those things that how if someone was to find them into the future, not only would they appreciate the beauty of the object of its time, but also the other information that it could give as well. It's fantastic. And I'd really like to go and see that museum. What was the name of the museum again? It was called the, it's called the Foundling Museum. And it was um, it was a hospital it's in London. And so I know you're perhaps thinking of doing a London trip for us crafty monkeys. Yes! So, that could, so that could be something of interest rather than just going to the v &A or to the Natural History Museum is to actually go to that museum because it is absolutely fascinating. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, and let's do it. Let's plan it. That sounds good. <laughs> That's really an interesting story and very touching and very moving. And like you say, quite sad. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it is. It, it this is the world this is the industry we're in and we're so lucky to be in this industry where you know I mean I was reading today about crafting and it has been shown I mean I put this on a post for you and I Gary about your Christmas card class it has been shown it's been with proper research that crafting creativity you know being involved in creative pursuits and activities does lower anxieties it can help mm. with depression it can help with insomnia and all sorts of things I'm not saying it's a cure I'm not a doctor please do not take this as medical advice if you need to go see your doctor about anything please do but I but it has been known that of course it does because it's mindfulness it's taking your mind out of the kind of panic situation it's in and you're focusing on your hands and doing something else but also as well from a social aspect the fact that we can all come together and all create these wonderful things and join together and have uh, pursuits that we're all interested in together is brilliant so it's lovely it's a lovely world to be in perfect Gary I like that the best bits of mindfulness we've done I think and I'm very interested in that museum 
I'll put a link to it underneath, actually. Yeah, um, we'll find so it and then put the link because it's I worth will. going to have a look. I will. And we've got some lovely viewers watching us. Hello, Julia. She said, such a sad thought. I know, darling, it is a sad thought um, with little children. But then at least they were pinned with something in the hope. There was hope there. And that's important to have hope in life. Um, so anybody else who's joined us, please leave us a comment. We would love to hear from you if you've got any comments. But come on, Gary, come on. Woo! Breathe, meditate, <laughs> fine. Right. Are you ready to start doing a bit of sewing, Rachel? <laughs> Never. Come on, Julian, send me some good, uh, send me some good vibes. <laughs> okay, let me show you what I've sent you. So you should have exactly the same as me. I've sent you, um, yes. this, is, this is what I'm going to call the foundation. So this is, a, for here, is just a square, six inches by six inches. And this is um, stitch and tear. Um, it doesn't have to be stitch and tear. In fact, you could just cut a piece from a piece of newspaper or a piece of paper or a bit of kitchen roll, as long as it's sort of re relatively strong. And it's something that you're going to use to build up. So we're calling it a foundation because we're building up on this to create this block. Now, up here, what you've got in your package is you've got some strips of fabric. Now, these are literally cut out of my scrap bag. And if you saw last week's episode when we were making um, mood boards and storyboards, we had these as our little story. These fabrics were all like little fabrics that we use for our autumn story or our mood board. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice to now take something from our mood board and now take it into something creative? So I've got bits of old shirt. So there's a bit of my old shirt. There's some block cotton. So we've just got some block colors, a brown and an orange. This is some old, very fine, almost like it's a wool um, dress fabric. It's very nice, very, but quite fine. And then we've just got a printed cotton here. But you can see they coordinate. And that's because we put our storyboard together. Now, the strips can be varying. I've done them in pairs. So they're in pairs. I've got one, two, three, four, five, five pairs of two. The widths, you can vary them. It doesn't matter, but you're going to use them as into pairs. So we've got widths of like two inches, one and a half inch. We've got um, just ordinary, just like little half, um, one inch squares. So we've got varying. I wouldn't go too wide. So between two and one inch is plentiful, but mix it up a bit and mix your, and I would suggest when you're doing this, have some pattern in there with some blocks as well. So I'm gonna put them up there for the minute. I've got, I've also got my little grader square and a cutting um, blade as well. Um, that's only for the end. And Rachel, do not worry if you've got, haven't got that because I'll do a quick little bit at the end and then you can cut yours up rather with your scissors and do it from that way. And I've got just a little pair of scissors, little snips, so I can just trim up as I go along. I've drawn a. Gary. I'm going to. Oh, you it. have. Oh, oh I'm impressed. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, right. So on your foundation, I have just, and this is just really a guide. Once you get more practice with this, you won't really need this. But I've just drawn a pencil line from one corner to the next, going across like that. Okay. Now, I've got my sewing machine to the side of me. I shall just bring into view a little bit so you can just see it. And we're gonna, I've just got it on an ordinary straight stitch. I've got it on a small width of a stitch. So it's here it's between two and 2.5. You don't need, when you're making sort of like quilt blocks, you don't need big stitches. And as long as the stitch is small enough, you don't need to really start doing back stitches to start and finish because that would just actually start to pucker up your, what you're doing. So you want to keep it all really nice and flat. Um, I have put on my little iron so I can press as I go along, but that's not necessary. And in fact, I think, Rachel, you're not going to iron. You're going to just press it. You're going to do what we call finger pressing. So I'll demonstrate finger pressing and we're going to just press it down with a finger and start again. OK, so if we're ready to start, I'll demonstrate the first one and then I'll get you to do it. And then we'll move on from there. So I'm going to pick up. Um, I'm going to pick up this lovely orange strip. So you should have an orange strip as well. And I'm just going to put the two pieces together like so. Now, I didn't tell you the length of them. The length is nine inches. So which is really, if you if you line it up diagonally like there, it is more than plentiful to go along that diagonal. And there's a little bit that hangs over the edge each side. And that's just to give us a little bit of leeway um, so that we can trim that off later. So don't worry if it's all hanging over the edge because you can trim it as you go along. Now, you're going to just, what I'm going to say is you're going to just line your piece of fabric up just a quarter of an inch over the line, like square like that. Just gonna line it up like that. Then gonna carefully pick it up and you're just going to stitch through it a quarter of an inch 
it doesn't matter if you get um if you get the quarter of an inch slightly slightly wrong on this exercise it doesn't matter when you're going when you're doing this you can have it if you think oh it's not quite a quarter of an inch it's more like half an inch if you do it like that then that's fine yeah. right let's just i'm just gonna <laughs> i just managed to unthread my machine as we go along so i can quickly talk so if you're quickly threading your machine always thread into something so if you put your finger behind you're not threading in, and I've talked about this before, you're not threading into the midair. Let's just bring that down. There we go. Whoops, no, we're not. So this is when, as you get older, you realize that your glasses, you need your glasses to actually do the job. There we go, done it. That's because, no, I haven't. <laughs> hey, well, the times that I take my glasses off, and <laughs> knowing that I can't read it and you just well, hope one day that your eyes are going to refocus and they're not they're not you know and today funnily enough we're talking about this focusing and everything like that and I'll tell all the viewers now I've um I'm due for an eye test so I went and actually made an appointment for the eye test and you realize that this sort of like eyesight sort of comes and goes in fits and starts so I haven't had to change my glasses for probably mm, 10 years or more and then just suddenly over these last few months I've noticed a lot of eye strain and a lot of like slow focus so um that's why I went for my eye test so I'm well I haven't had the test I'm going to be having the test soon so I'll be like super super like sharp eyed when I've got that <laughs> Okay, I've got this in line now and I've got ready up. So I'm going to just put my needle in, put my foot down, and I'm just going to machine down to the end, a quarter of an inch. I'm going to try and keep it as straight as possible. And if you've gone slightly off centre, that's fine. But hopefully, by luck, by judgment, those stitches should be somewhere within that pencil line that you originally drew. So if we have a look, yeah, I'm completely covered that line. So what we're going to do now is we're going to now open that and we just we can finger press that so with warm fingers we just run it down and so we've just finger pressed that we've finger pressed that open or this side of the scissors what you can do is you can rub just gently up and down there and then that will open it out as well so you can do that how have you have you ready to do that Rachel do you want to do that I, am, I think I am so let me just add in my um add a spot like that that's so it Okay, so there's my thing. No, I just missed the bit. Did you say I'm sort of over a quarter of an inch over the? Yeah, and I would actually line up if you can manage, like flat on the table. Line up your um. So if I push that over, line up your piece of fabric yeah. Yeah. across the angle. Then pick it up together. It should stay together, and then then you put it under because sometimes if you try and line it up on the machine, it slightly might go out of an angle. So see if you can just do that. Hang on, got it. So you got to get it over. About a quarter of an inch, okay, over there, like that. So we don't have to worry too much about being too precise, do we? No. And then I'm saying right on the edge of the fabric. Yes. Right near enough to the edge of the fabric. Give yourself about a quarter of an inch little seam allowance and just machine from one end to the other. And, I'm, and do you think that's about, you see where that pencil mark is? Is that about yeah. right? Is that about yeah. right? That's about right. They'll be fine. And don't worry if you slightly go out of, of that line. It just adds to the design. It just make it look quite quirky and nice. It's fine at this stage. Um, hang on. Hang on. We've got, we've got a mal malfunction already. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. Nobody panic. Nobody panic. Nobody's panicking. Hang on. Don't know why that's not right. so... There is a bobbin in there, isn't there? Oh, please say I've got a bobbin thread in there. I can see a bobbin in there, actually, Rachel. It's just not threaded. You've checked your. Th you've checked where the thread runs from the top right through, haven't you? Yeah, hang on. Oh, God, you know, you know. Oh, it's empty. My bobbin's empty. Oh, have you got another bobbin already filled up? Yeah, hang on. I'm not. Gonna be, I'm not going to be worrying about colours. Hang on a minute. You don't don't worry about the colour because, in fact, just for this little practice, it will, it's fine to have this another colour on the yeah. bottom. Right. OK, I've got one. Hang on. So now, wait a minute. That goes in there like that. Hang on. Does it, yeah, that's about right. And then that goes like that, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Like that. It's caught. Look at me looking like a professional. <laughs> don't hold your breath yet. Try again, Rach. <laughs> right, I don't need to throw anything through. I Oh, thanks for the confidence. I got the boat. <laughs> Let's see how we do. So. Uh, right, here we go. Oh, come on. So, please sew machine. 
Okay, Gary, why is it not? What's happening? Why are your machines I think, not going? I think you put the bobbin in the wrong way. So I think the bobbin. Are you no wait? No, because the foot. Hang on, is it the feed dog things? Didn't oh, we it do could something? Be. Didn't we do an exercise? Yeah. Wait. Big stinks. It's working. Hurrah, okay. hurrah. Right. A bit of a wobbly line. Oh dear. It's because the excitement of it all, that's what it's done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Right. Uh, breathe. Now breathe. <laughs> it's important to do that in class. Right. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay. So now open it up. Yeah. And press that with your finger. Or with the edge of my scissors. Yes. Okay. Lovely. Lovely. That looks all right, Rachel. It does, it does, it does. Okay. We're fine. Okay. Yep. So now this is quite this is this is it sort of starts to build up now. So you can pick another sort of like um a strip that's going to go either side of here. So I think we'll use this little stripey number because that might look quite, it's quite a nice coordinate there just to put, now we've got a block colour to now put this nice little stripey. So we're just lining either side. If you look, you can see on screen, I've just lined it up that side and I'm going to just machine down there. So I'm just going to machine, I really only need to machine where it's actually going to go through the foundation. So you don't have to start right up here. You can start just before the foundation underneath and finish just after. And then you're going to do, you're going to flip open, do the other side. So I'm just going to do that. I'll do one side and then I'll talk you through the other one. So again, quarter of an inch, just starting a little bit before the, um, the paper. And I just finished just after the foundation paper. Bring a needle up and out. So that's that side. This is that side done there. Now I'm going to just flip around and I could do the other side to the other side of that with the other stripes. Yeah, fireworks in the background. You've got fireworks going off. Yeah. Have you? No, yeah, we haven't. I went to pick up Maddie last night from work and then we saw one big firework. So we thought, oh, is there a firework display? And so we were pulled up by the side of the road and we watched this amazing display completely for free. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was brilliant. Lovely. Yeah. So again, so you're just going to press those down either side with your fingers and your scissors. I'm going to just give a little press with my little mini iron just over here. Oh, I saw the other that. side, the other one as well. Yeah. Yeah, the other side. That's it. There you go. Tell hey, you what, I've heard about this fantastic place, Gary. It's called Crafty Monkeys. And on <laughs> the website, craftymonkeys.com, they've got all these on-demand classes. And, and do, there yeah. is, I think we've got a table runner on there, of, of which I did, which was this strings block. And oh. so we made, they've made a table runner. So I think that is on is on there if anyone's interested in actually what you can make something like this in it's on there for people to follow yeah. okay lovely right okay okay so now i'm going to let you choose the next strip what would you like to go next to the stripey so do you want there's that lovely we've got a printed like little round circle so we've got the check or we've got another plain block it's entirely down to you which one you'd like to be the next one it's just singles, isn't it, obviously? Right, um, okay, so would I go for, oh, I think that's a bit too soon for the orange myself. Oh, I don't know. Oh, the choices, the choices. <laughs> choices, choices. choices. Oh, let me just have a look on both sides. Now that's crazy to go with that. Maybe go with those circles. Yeah, I think the circles. I think so. So think the circles, because it's printed on one side, so you've got a right side, a wrong side. So it's right, it's right sides to right sides down yes. on top. So we can do one. And again, can you see you're getting shorter and shorter? So ideally, if you had just very short pieces, little strips rather than nine, you could just fill out with shorter pieces if you wanted to. It's inside, but 
for this exercise, I've cut all your strips the same length. But this is if you had smaller pieces as you're working towards these edges, you can use much smaller strips. So we're just going to do the printed one now. So you get your one, do exactly the same. Little quarter of an inch. Yeah. How am I doing, Julianne? Put it in the chat. <laughs> There's probably someone shouting us going, you're doing it all wrong. But no, this is the way we're, well, this is the way we can do it. I expect there's other, other methods and other ways that people could do this. Yeah, we don't like the quilt police. But I, and again, I think this, just stitching down little strips on a piece of, you know, foundation, like a piece of paper or something like that. It's quite, it doesn't overtax the mind and it's quite relaxing, really. Yeah, it is. It's very relaxing. I've got a little family sessions. It's, so, it's such fun. Doesn't feel like somebody was saying today, well, how's it going with the business and everything? And the thing is, I said, you know, yeah, I'm not a multimillionaire out of it. <laughs> Quite probably, <laughs> probably about 25 million off being a 25 millionaire. Um, but I said, but I do love it because I'm I get to do all these amazing creative things. I meet wonderful people. It's yeah, a variety of things that I do. Oh, I'm unthreaded. Oh, no. Oh, not again. Oh, dear. I hate, that. I hate it. You know what I'm like with threading. I'm rubbish. Ah, right, hang on. Down and up. Oh. Down and up. Let's go with that. It's down. Ah, right. Um. Uh, that looks okay. Um, I always forget which. Where do I tuck in on this? I can't. I always forget how to thread my machine. So your vent, you just there's a little um pit at the top of the post. There's a little thing to just push it behind, and then you you thread from the front through to the back on a domestic sewing machine. Funnily enough, on industrial sewing machines, and this is why it always throws me. You go from left to right. You have to you have to thread it from the side inwards. And I think on I've got um a featherweight um little tiny featherweight old vintage Singer sewing machine. And again, that's from left to right. So it's all they're all slightly different. Yeah. Oh, here we go. You're all right. Oh, I hate threading needles. <laughs> None of us will look at you. We're to, we distract ourselves by doing something else in the meantime. I'm going to have a cup of tea. I'm just going to have a little surf of my cup of tea while we do yeah, that. Everybody needs to go off and have like a dinner because he's going to tell me. <laughs> it's oh, not okay. good. Has that gone through? Hurrah! Okay, getting quicker. There you go. Right. Okay. Onward. Right. Let me put my uh, my fabric back on. Okay. And then down we go. Uh, here we go. Lovely. I think I might be a bit of a tangle there, but never mind. It's all right. It's all right. Nobody's I usually, when we're sewing with other, with I've got my students, I usually like you trim as you go along, but I know you're under pressure and yeah. this is live. So I'm not going to say trim your little threads as you go along. We're just going to go with it. Yeah. Hang on. Well, I am actually trimming. I am trimming. Some Are you? <laughs> right. When you say threads, yeah, not fabrics, threads. Right. Okay. No, not, the fa not yet. Just the thread, just the loose threads. Okay, and then well, open, open those out and press those to your to the towards the left and to the right so you've got them open up to the left oh i've missed my thing there does it oh that was great you might need to just catch just catch that in rachel catch it in. that's you. it pick up where you left please don't say i've come on thread again I'm not Why? I don't know. <laughs> Monkey. Sometimes when I pull my piece of work out from the machine, I always make sure I've given it a good like length of tail. I cut a good length because 
you know, by the time then it goes to sew again, it might be too short and then it keeps coming undone. So give yourself a plenty of tail on as you pull it away to, before you cut it away. Right, come on. This is what takes the time, isn't it? Threading the needle. Right, okay, I've done it. Now, let me just see where I am on my strips, whether I actually caught anything there. No, I didn't, so let me just do that again. Let me just do that again. Right, so I give myself a nice long tail there and it's down there, isn't it? Yeah, all right, so from there. That's it. Pick up where you lovely. Okay, it goes up there. Plenty of length of tail, pull that to one side and then trim nearer to the your work that you're working with rather than trimming the thread off by the machine. That's it, that's much better. So that's good practice to do that. So, and then you've got a plentiful tail. Yes, you might be you know, using a little bit more fabric um, thread than you want to, but while you're just getting used to your machine, getting used to sewing, give yourself a plenty of length and then it won't keep coming unthreaded. And then, then push your threads to the back. Okay, right, okay. that's it, press them out. Them out. And really, we you've only got really, I would imagine, just space for one more strip. So yeah. I, for mine, I've chosen this nice little check. So I'm going to put now, so it's going to look quite, it's going to be quite busy. It's going to have a plane in the middle. Then we're going to have one check. Then we've got the circles. And then I'm going to put the next check by the side of it. Just there. I might go plane. Can I go you plane? You do plane. That would be nice because then we can see the differences and what was, um, you know, what works and what doesn't. So again, I'm going to just put my strips on those edges this should be this should be enough to finish to now cover the whole of the foundation piece that we're working on okay now my foot's come off <laughs> <laughs> i shouldn't laugh i really must not i should not laugh but I <laughs> one of our ladies actually used this machine in um in the retreat this year and she did say to me the foot keeps coming off Right. Can you get it back on, Gary. Why is it? Where, where's it screw on? So it screws on to the side. So you've got to find your little screwdriver. So find your little screwdriver to then. I don't, I don't have a little screwdriver. But I can't uh, find the hole. So you lift your foot. Make sure your foot's right up so you can get your <laughs> foot underneath. <laughs> 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 Oh, this is all going horribly wrong now. It'll uh, be fine. Oh, I don't even know how to get that on. Okay. You know. Wait. You carry on, Cola. You carry on. All right. Okay. I'm so where's your foot? Where's your foot actually gone, <laughs> Rachel? Where is it's it? in my hand. Right. <laughs> Oh, right. right. So, so where's this go on? Look, can you see? Can you? You can't see, can you? Yeah, I can see. You've got yeah. So, and then I've got this screw down here, but it's just come off totally. Yeah. So the screw's got to be. You've got to unloosen the screw, so then it should be able to. Then you lift your foot up, and you should go underneath and click it in. But it's not. There's nowhere for that to go in. There's nowhere for that screw to go in unless it's in there. That can't be right. What's happening? I feel like it should, I feel like that hole there. No, it doesn't go through that hole. Turn it to the side so to face the camera like that. Ah, yeah, I see what you mean. Cause I thought you'd have like a little groove where it fit into like your post that goes up and down. Um, there would be a little groove or a little slot that that would fit in. Hang on, I'm going to just have a look at mine. So the foot's gone, but the whole, the whole, not just the bottom of the foot, the whole thing's gone off, hasn't it? So yeah. Yeah, the whole foot's come off. Right. So bring your camera in closer so I can see what you're doing with that. Right. Zooming in, zooming in. Right. So. <laughs> 
Ah, right. So does it go the, did you, did the screw come out, Rachel? Oh yes, right. Take that screw, right. Take the screw out as far as it will go. Okay. Okay. And there, there is a little, um, there is a little um, groove between where that, where you've got your thumb and you've got your finger on the back. Is there a little post, like an area where the post can go down in between? Not the back, no, to the side. Yeah. No. The, uh, right, the yes, there is. Right. So I'm going to take mine off. Okay. This is a great example of your... Okay. Right. So I'm just going to turn my machine to the, on, the, on its side like that. Okay, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna undo my, so you've got exactly the same. So I'm the same as you. I'm just gonna unscrew my. <clears throat> you can just unscrew that. Mine's on so tight, you can't get it off, I tell you. See, I need to get my little screwdriver in there because mine is and that's what's happening, it's loose. Thank you, Julienne, okay. by the way. Julienne has said, you're doing great. I knew you would. <laughs> she broke. Until I was Julienne. Okay, right. So you can see on screen, yeah. I've got it in my hand. Yeah. Exactly the same as yours. The post has got to go in to this, and I'll show it with my screwdriver. The post has to go in here. So you're putting it on this way. There's, this is your post, and then you put the post in there, and then the screw here to the side, then clamps it to the side. So your post goes in that way. So you're going to go in. That's it, Rachel. So when you actually just with your with the press of foot, press that, push your lever up a little bit. Press the press of foot with the lever at the side. Just press it up. Up. That, that's that, it. Yeah, but that's that's your press of foot. But no, the press of foot is here. This thing that lifts the lifts the originally lifts the um the foot up and down. That's it. Yeah. So that gives you enough space to then get underneath to then um, put the... So, oh, I see. Okay, hang on. Just gonna put my phone down for a second. Sorry, people. I know that's not very flattering. Right, hang on. I see, I see, I see, I see. Right, so that's now. <laughs> I still can't get that in. Okay, hang on. I love this. <laughs> Wait, oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, and this is where I need my screwdriver and I don't have one. I don't want to drop off, you see. Let's see if I can just tighten it enough, this class. Okay, right. Okay, good. Okay. I'm just going to put okay. my camera. Camera back up. Okay, and then I need to get this 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 foot back on now. Yeah, so that foot, just literally, you, you can use the lever, your presser foot lever, to just click it on, clicks on play, in place. Right. Okay. I think we're back in business. Ugh. Right. <laughs> Are you oh. still breathing? <laughs> breathe, in, breathe into it, Rachel. You're all right. You're doing okay. It's worse than giving birth. Right, okay. <laughs> Right, come on, let's carry on, let's carry on, let's get this done. And um, put foot down. Yeah. And just try gently. A bit of sewing, shall we? I'm very impressed though. At the beginning, I realised that it's because my feet dots have been removed because I'd done free motion embroidery. Yeah. That's why it wasn't going forward. Could have absolutely panicked. The, the more machine. the more you practice, the more you're like instantly be able to like do all your fault finding thing. Oh, that's what's happened. This is what I need to do. But it's only, that only through experience, you know, that you'll know. Oh, right, that's the the foot is loose. The screw needs tightening up. Yeah. You know. Missed a bit there. Right. Okay. 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 Good, all right, I'm gonna do the other side. Okay. Hello from the other side. Better not sing anymore, I'll get sued. 
probably already going to get sued now because of that. Right, okay, here we go. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. When you push that over, does it cover all of the foundation yes. underneath? It does. Does it really? Well, oh, I've got oh. one corner left. Let's, on have, one a look side. At, Only let's on one. have a look at the other side. That's yeah. okay there. What about the other side? Right. So I've got, if you look at mine, I've got just a little peekaboo of a little yes. bit there and there. That's just a little bit. So what we can do is you can decide, you can cut. So there's these bits here that you don't need. I'm going to just put a little bit of this nice little bit of orange on the end there. I'm just going to just put that on there and that will just cover up. So you put them on both sides, Rachel, even though you've only got for the moment, you've only got one bit showing on one side, but you can do a nice, what, do a nice. I'll do a bit of check. Yeah. But make sure you've used the same colour on each side and that'll be fine. But I've got to make sure that I catch the, um, the, the stuff of my. Yeah. Yeah. Underneath. OK. Just move my machine out of the way there, thinking it was the end. <laughs> right. If we do the check there, right side to right side, like that, and then we sew that bit. That's it. All right, lovely okay. job. Okay, yeah. done both sides, both sides are done, yeah? Yes. Lovely, okay. So then once they're all, press them all out, then flip it over and you can see your white piece of paper. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just trim up all those pieces to, you can do it with um, a rotary blade or you can do it with your scissors and I'm gonna just trim away all the, the excess bits that I don't need. So I'm gonna just trim away. So I've gone back, I'm just trimming up next to the size of that little bit of stitch and tear underneath. Okay, so right, we just go sorry. to the, yeah, okay. I'm just gonna to have to do it with scissors. Do it with scissors, Rachel, because you really need a nice cutting mat to do that on for the moment. So you can just trim up. I'll just do a very rough trim, it's fine. Rough? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I mean is if I had a rope, rope it would be better, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay. Of course, I've got the smallest scissors in the world. That looks all right. We'll see when I turn it over in a minute. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> not very, it's not very straight. <laughs> I need my, I need to tidy it up with my rotary cut. Oh, what's happened there? I don't know what I've done there. No, that's fine. It's just that it needs pressing down a little bit. Oh, that, I've missed my stitch in there. Oh dear. It's not very impressive. I sound like one of our students now. It's not very well, Rachel, this is the first quilt block you've ever done. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I've definitely missed, I've missed a bit there. Okay, we'll just, okay. Hide, just hide that. Nobody will know. It's All right. just practice. We're just practicing for the first time, Rachel. Stop panicking. 
rating yourself what do i say to people in class stop telling yourself off yeah exactly right so let me just make that a bit prettier there right okay so yes okay there you go lovely so you it looks near enough the same as mine but it doesn't i haven't looked up yet <laughs> right wait a minute okay There you are. Yeah, not bad at all for your very first attempt. Now, I'd just say that maybe you've got to like be a bit more um, stronger with your pressing. So maybe either pushing down with really like with your fingers or having a little like I have a little mat with a little iron by the side of it. So I can just sort of press as I go along. And the yeah. pressing when you're making sort of like blocks and things really does, you know, does make a difference. It really helps sort of push them, you know, yeah. really out and making it really not laid nice and flat. Now. You could use this and make several of these different combinations. And I think probably if it, you use the same sort of colorways and did different combinations in different colorways, they can imagine them all joined up and they could look quite nice. But I'm going to show you something that you can do even more. So this is only a small block. This is only six by six. You can make it nine by nine or even bigger if you wanted to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut now cut this and I'm going to show you other blocks that you can another block that you can make just from this little square. So if it's, it's six by six, so I'm gonna cut it, first of all, I'm gonna cut it through the middle this way, three inches in. So I'm gonna do three inches in. So I'm cutting right through the middle like that. So now I've got two halves and then you could play with that and start putting that together and start thinking about, well, what could I do? Join it that way, maybe make long strips or something like that. Again, it's coordinated, but what you can do is then cut it again. So what you've got, what you've got here is quarters. So you've got like little quarters now of your block. And can you imagine trying to join up these if we hadn't done it that way? And now what you can do is you can start creating different designs like that. And you can start creating other shapes and other things with this as well. So you and can create other that's where the real playtime comes in, Gary, because exactly. you've got no idea what it's going to look like until you start chopping it and then just turning the squares around. Exactly. So you can start changing the squares around, doing those, bring other squares in and do those also. So you can start to play like that. And then you can add on other things as well. You can add on to the side here like that. You can see how that's joining up on the side here and that one's joining on the side. Let's do it that way. See if we can get it. That looks a little bit better that way. Can you see? So the combinations of little patterns that, that you can create with just with strings and just doing little bits and pieces, then cutting it up and shifting it around, you can start to create much more um, patterns within a quilt block. So then you would join these up quarter of an inch, they would all join up, you would press them, and so that, that would work quite well as well. So that is your introduction today of creating some string blocks on a foundation piece. And the foundation pieces, obviously, if it was paper, you could just tear the paper away, stitch and tear, you can take it away. But if it's laying quite nice with the foundation piece still left into it, I would leave it there for the time being. You could take it away later if you wanted to, but I tend to leave mine in. Love it. I love it. Okay. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think I did a particularly good view, uh, view, uh, not view, a particularly good job myself. Um, yeah, not great, but... First quilt block. I've made a quilt block. Yes. And another <laughs> nice thing you could do, you know, you, I cut it into just like into quarters, but you could cut diagonally. So you could cut diagonally across there and across down again. So you get still get quarters, but they look more like sort of like little wedges and then put the wedges together and then do that. that. So <laughs> That was me playing around with that, my iPad, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay we'll forgive you <laughs> speaker Hang on. oh now we've got the cup of tea on there right we just need to um we need to place the spotlight with you and add a spotlight with me there we go now gary it's the two of us now so we can close. absolutely chaotic <laughs> <laughs> but you know what that's the beauty <laughs> of our videos and let's face it everybody can just skip forward and uh, stop when they want so there you yeah. go 
Right, what Julienne said. She was saying, by the way, thank you, Julienne. She said the unthreading and the foot coming off are typical things that we all do, Rachel. I've been sewing for years and I still do go. So yeah, <laughs> do jolly well go. Yeah. And I think people really enjoyed you just crawling around on your hands and knees trying to find a screwdriver and trying to put... <laughs> Did you actually see with you any of those things? <laughs> At one point, the camera was at such a strange angle. I don't know what was going on. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know what? We've just had fun for an hour. We've laughed. We've played. The time's just gone by. I've made a quilt uh, lot. And that is what life is about, isn't it? That's yeah. what life is about, Gary. That's yeah. what life and, is about. you know, even though we're in two different parts of the country, I can still teach you and help you when you've come unstuck and I go right I'll show you my machine I'll turn it upside down this is how I'm doing it show me what you're doing and so it is doable I don't have to be stood right next to you physically in that room I can do you from here in Somerset you up in Lincolnshire and we can get it done exactly and that is the beauty of zoom and that's what we're trying to get across to yeah. people to learn sewing on zoom and let's face it now with uh, property uh, property with petrol prices <laughs> knows what um, stay indoors and, you know, save all the petrol and come and learn with us on Zoom and watch YouTube for us, definitely. But uh, come and have a look at our classes that we've got on our website because um, Gary is teaching several art classes and a lovely little reindeer class and things like that, which may have gone by the time you watch this video. Who knows? But it'll be in the shop. Uh, so go and have a look at the on-demand recordings. And there's, there's hundreds of hours of classes there that you can just literally download, rent, click, buy straight away. Uh, so uh, lots of options there on the website, craftingmonkeys.com. But lots on the YouTube channel. If you want to watch some more professional people doing blocks, we have got a whole section called Blocks. People like Janet Clare, Sarah Payne, uh, Jenny Raymond, Charlotte Newland, loads of people. And then, of course, we've got projects. Gary has made projects for us and those of other people. And there's chats and all sorts of things. So please do have a look at the rest of the YouTube channel. But thank you so much, lovely Gary. I That's really right. can ask what we're doing next week. Please don't oh. say we're, we're making a quilt next week, are we? I've got my diary here. What have I written into my diary? Right. No, we're not making a quilt block next week. But what I want to do next week is actually um, a lot of my work, my artwork, and in fact, it ties in with something you just put out on Instagram today, my Christmas cards, hurrah, Yay. Christmas is coming. And they're based on collage. So what I want to talk about next week, next Friday, is about collage and creating some of your own papers and then how you can use some of those papers to just create a very simple collage. So it's not about necessarily you know, drawing this time. It's about cutting out shapes, sticking them down, but we're going to find things that we can collage. So, you know, I'm going to give you a list of things that you might find around your office there. Um, and I'll have the similar here and we'll make some papers and then we'll just create a very simple picture from collage. And that's how I do the Christmas cards. And that's how I've done some of my sketchbook workshops and things like that. So I think it'd be nice to sort of get you to do some and also introduce everyone out there in YouTube world. Um, let's get you collaging. Yes. That's what I want to do. Fabulous. I love it. We're going to take over YouTube, Gary. We are. <laughs> we, are. Uh, we are. Today we've had 12 viewers. You can add oh another 100,000 onto that next week. It's going to be 1,200,000. It's probably 1 1.2 million or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, it doesn't matter. Um, I do watch someone on YouTube at the moment, and um, they always say, if I have changed one person's life today, or if I've given you some good advice, just one person, then karmically, I've done my job. And I think we always do the same, Gary. If mm -hmm. one person has watched us, we did those lovely uh, vision boards last week, didn't we? And yes, yeah. On Instagram. So how many more tried it and have never told us? But two mm -hmm. people posted their boards for us and said, loved it, went and I had a go in the garden. I mean, that's so nice. I was so proud of us that we'd inspire yeah. us to go out and do some yeah. lovely cards on a Sunday. So it's really good. So I, you know, I don't care. It'd be lovely to have 12 million people watching us. Um, we could then go to Saint Tropez, couldn't we, on the YouTube <laughs> <laughs> money that they paid us for 12 million people watching us. But you know something? Those 12 who have watched us, thank you very much. We appreciate every single one of you. And I'm sure by next week, it'll be 120, hopefully. Right. OK, lovely, Gary. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you to everybody else. Please like the button, like and hit the button. And say, I'm not very good at this. Subscribe. Ring the bell. You ring have to put bell. like, ring the bell, subscribe. Look at that. Beep, 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 beep. Just press all the buttons. All the buttons you see, press them, press them, press them. <laughs>
<laughs> right, we shall bid you adieu. Um, and we will see you next Friday. Um, are we going to be live next Friday? I can do live. I think I can do live. Uh, so live next Friday here on Instagram. I can see the monitoring bit to the left of me here. Um, and at the moment, it's, it's about 20 seconds behind. So I just caught myself then going like this. <laughs> and so what am I doing? Right. OK, let's end this stuff. I was going to say this nonsense, but it's good nonsense. It's good crafty soul good soul food nonsense right okay <laughs> lovely youtuber lovely gary we shall say goodbye see you next time bye, bye. bye.